Ladies and gentlemen, welcome today to another edition of a Power Rankings video on the channel. In today's video, we're going to review the top 10 drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series, just like we did last week for the first time, doing it for the second time this week, following Saturday night's NASCAR Cup Series race at Martinsville. Like and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content as we get into the rest of this video. For number 10 this week on the list, we have Kyle Larson. His original rank was number 8 on the list, but after a poor performance and running outside the top 10 all day long, when he pretty much got outran by two of his teammates, especially, but even really all three of his teammates this weekend at Martinsville, I had to drop him below the list compared to a couple of the drivers that we were going to have a little bit higher on this list. It would be in an eighth last week, dropping two spots. I still have to keep him in the top 10. He does have a win this season. It is worth knowing, noting that he is the lowest in the regular season standings of any driver who has a win that is on this list. Uh, in fact, actually, even the drivers without a win on this list, he is the lowest on the current regular season point standings. Kyle Larson still sitting at one win on the year, the three top fives, three top tens, and he still has three DNFs this season, still 59 laps led. Not bad for Kyle Larson uh, as a whole, but considering it is Kyle Larson, I think we expect more out of him, especially coming off a career year last year and winning the championship. So I do have Kyle Larson backing up a little bit in the power rankings this week. Coming in at number 9 on the list, it's going to be Martin Truex Jr. Truex is going to drop in the rankings as well from last week to this week as he sits at number 9. Last week, his rank was number 6. He's still sitting pretty good in the regular season point standings right now. He's 7th, but going into the week last week, he was actually 3rd. He dropped 5 spots in the point standings, sorry, 4 spots in the point standings, and he also had to finish outside the top 10. Compared to the drivers that moved ahead of him, I had to drop him back, and uh, I didn't want to drop him back as far as I did, but that's a pretty big drop in the regular season standings. He still doesn't have a win this year as well, so a lot of the drivers you're going to see on this list have a win this year, unless they're at the very, very top of the regular season point standings. So Martin Tricks Jr. at number 9. Chase Briscoe coming in at number 8 on this list. Uh, last weekend, Chase Briscoe was also up a little bit higher. He was in 7th. Going to drop him back one position. He still got a top 10 finish at Martinsville. Ended up finishing ninth, pretty good. He didn't run in the top 10 most of the day. Just kind of snuck up there on that last restart on uh, that forced overtime after the 38 car had gotten into the wall bringing out the caution so if it wasn't for that he probably wasn't going to get a top 10 finish but he still was able to do so at the end of the day it's only his third top 10 of the season that is also worth noting he has led 128 laps this season which is actually the fifth most most of those laps were in his win at phoenix uh in that race he also ended up uh not only uh winning the race but he ended up getting a lot of stage points so that's definitely helping him he does drop back with the lack of stage points this weekend and barely getting the top 10 finish he was in the top 10 in the regular season point standings i believe he was ninth last week he's 11th now so no longer in the top 10 in points he is the lowest driver on this list as of right now or the second lowest behind larson on the regular season standings that is also in this power rankings list so dropping chase briscoe back a little bit i have to keep him ahead of kyle larson still they both have the same amount of top tens larson does have one more top five but briscoe has twice as many laps led and he's two spots higher in the point standings as far as briscoe ahead of truex there's an argument there truex is four spots ahead of him in points but i think just having the win and again more laps led is really showing that chase briscoe uh, is uh, maybe a little bit more consistent throughout the course of the race compared to, say, Martin Truex Jr. And uh, Toyota as a whole, just the third best of the manufacturers, definitely knocks Truex down another notch as well. As for the drivers who I do not have on this list that I was very close to putting on, a couple of the same from last week, Kevin Harvick, Tyler Reddick, those are two drivers I barely kept off of the list last week. When we compared them to the three drivers I have on the list this week, uh, Kevin Harvick actually dropped back in the point standing to his eighth. Now he drops back to ninth place. He also has three top tens on the year, which is the same amount as Larson and Briscoe. Uh, Mark Trix Jr. has one more top ten than him. Uh, when you consider that, the fact that Harvick doesn't have any wins and he's only led 12 laps, which is less than those other four have to have him outside Tyler Reddick he's really slumped back he did not have a good weekend this week compared to his teammate Austin Dillon uh, he's 12th in the regular season standings he is one spot above Larson in the standings but again Larson has a win so we know he's locked into the playoffs we don't know that Tyler Reddick is locked into the playoffs so uh, that is concerning. When I'm ranking these top 10 for the power rankings, these are my top 10 favorites for the championship. I can't put Tyler Reddick in there if he's not secured into the playoffs right now, especially 12th in the points. That's right around there on the bubble, especially when you consider the fact that he has three drivers behind him in the regular season standings with win. 
uh, Kyle Larson, Austin Sindrick, and Denny Hamlin. So if you take those guys out, Redick is actually 15th in the actual playoff standings right now. So he is definitely on the bubble right now. The other driver I left off this list this week barely is his teammate Austin Dillon. Dillon really proved to run very, very well. Got the top three at Martinsville this weekend. Uh, he ran top 10 all day, scored a lot of stage points. Coincidentally, Austin Dillon actually has one more top 10 and the same amount of top fives as Tyler Reddick. Difference is Reddick has 97 laps led. Austin Dillon only has two laps led. So I would put Reddick ahead of Austin Dillon, plus he's a few spots higher in points than him. On the actual playoff standings itself, Reddick would be 15th, Austin Dillon 16th. So they are pretty close to one another considering they are teammates. Uh, statistically as well. Again, the only major stat that flies out to me is Tyler Reddick has had more laps led this year. Uh, 90 of those 97 laps led, though, for Tyler Reddick this season were at Auto Club. So I do uh, throw the fact in there that it was only one race that he led the majority of those laps, but still laps led. It's laps led. Uh, and Tyler Reddick has definitely fallen off a little bit these last couple weeks. He didn't look too strong at Richmond, and he obviously did not look strong this weekend at Martinsville compared to his teammate Austin Dillon, who had a top 10 in both races. If I remember correctly, I believe Austin Dillon finished 10th at Richmond, and then this weekend he ended up uh, obviously having a third-place finish. So Dillon may be a little bit better in the short tracks this year than Reddick. But either way, both those guys, as well as Harvick, off the list this week. At number seven on the list, I have Kyle Busch. He was number nine last week. He's going to jump up a little bit this week. He's now in the top ten in the regular season point standings. He moves up one spot ahead of Chase Briscoe, so had to put him ahead of him there. And he's also tied for the most top fives this season. He's one of only three drivers that have five top fives this season, uh, joining the top two in the point standings, Chase Elliott, Kyle, or sorry, Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney. Coincidentally, all three of those guys don't have a win, but it is obviously noticeable why Kyle Busch is the lowest of the three on the power rankings list because he is much further in points. I just mentioned Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney. They're the top two in the regular season point standings. They're the most consistent drivers this year. Consistency is where Kyle Busch is lacking. Yes, he has five top ten finishes in the first eight races. Those other three races he has not gotten top tens, have not been good. He does have one DNF in those races. And uh, I think he ended up finishing another race, uh, multiple laps down at the end. I think the Daytona 500, he ended up finishing well outside the top 10 in that one. Atlanta was the race he DNF'd in. So two of them are super speedways. We do have a super speedway at Talladega coming up in a few weeks. That could also maybe hurt him. I don't really know if him being a great dirt racer either. That could hurt him this week. So we'll see for Kyle Busch. He may move back again, especially if he starts to go long way into this season without getting a win. When you consider the fact we already have seven different winners and uh, six of them, or five of them, I should say, are on this power rankings list. We'll, we'll definitely see, but he outran all of those guys this weekend that he moved ahead of in the power rankings list. So moving up two spots, Kyle Busch to P7 on the power rankings this week. Joey Logano is going to come in at number 6 on the power rankings this week. And uh, last week he was 10th, so Joey Logano going to move up quite a bit. I slept on Joey Logano last week. I don't know why I had him at 10. Uh, the reason why I pretty much had him at 10 was considering the fact that he hasn't led a lot of laps this year. He was in the uh, top 10 in the regular season point standings. He's up to 4th now, scoring stage points in both stages this week, getting a top 5 finish. That was strong for Logano. It was the second top 5 of the year, and it was his 4th top 10 of the season, so he only... I should say he's tied for the second most top tens. Uh, top fives as of right now, there's a lot of drivers really that have one or two. Very few of them have more than two. But fourth in the regular season point standings, Joey Logano scoring almost as many stage points, if not more stage points, than most of the other drivers in the field this season. He's only 27 back of points leader Chase Elliott. So I look for Joey Logano to turn it on. He won at Dirt Bristol last year. If he can do that this year, Talladega, another great racetrack for him. He's really good on the super speedways. Fords are fast on the super speedways generally. I look out for Joey Logano these next few weeks. If he can really get it going at these tracks, uh, I, I think he could definitely move inside the top five in our power rankings list, especially if he gets that win. If he had a win, if he would have a win this season, he would definitely be in the top five right now. That's the only reason really he isn't. And number five on our power rankings list this week is Alex Bowman. Right where we had him last week, I didn't want to move him up, didn't want to move him down. Uh, he didn't run very well at Martinsville. Joey Logano definitely outran him. But I think the stats alone, uh, really just the win, is the only thing and the only reason I have Alex Bowman ahead of Joey Logano in the point standings, 
Alex Bowman is sixth in the driver's standings. Joey Logano is fourth. So although Logano does have a beat, again, Bowman has the win. Uh, Bowman is about 24 points behind him. So that's a decent gap behind him. Uh, outside of the win, they both have two top fives this year. They both have four top tens. And Logano actually has led a little bit more laps with 34 laps led to Bowman 16. Bowman, again, the lowest on the top 10 power rankings list with laps led. He definitely has to get that laps led number up if he wants to be a real championship threat this season. But honestly, outside of that, he is finishing the races off more consistently through the first eight races this year than any other race or any other season, I should say, in Alex Bowman's career. So look out for Alex Bowman. Again, if we get into the summer months, Traxy has won at like Pocono last year, ran, weather, ran well in the doubleheader there last weekend. Uh, uh, Kansas, obviously, he usually runs pretty good out of the mile and a half. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of other tracks. We go back to Richmond again. He obviously won there last year and uh, had a pretty decent run there last week as well. So I think Alex Bowman could have some good runs in him. Again, the uh, he does have a stage win as well uh, this season also. Uh, Joey Logano does not have a stage win, so he does have him beat there, but pretty much it's the race win. The only reason I have Bowman 5 over Joey Logano. And Kyle Busch is below these guys because he's much further back in the regular season standings. He's 10th right now and without a win, so he's definitely not going ahead of Bowman. And Logano is 6 spots higher than him in points, so I had to put Joey Logano ahead of Kyle Busch. Now into the championship four. As far as my championship four right now, these are the four drivers in the exact order. Starting, of course, with number four, we have Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott was also number four on the power rankings list last week. He led a lot of laps this weekend, got his first two stage wins of the year, and uh, I think he ended up with 186 laps led this year, which puts him to 276 laps led on the season putting him at the third most laps led on the year. On top of that, he has taken over the regular season points lead. He's only three points ahead of Ryan Blaney and 12 points ahead of Byron, so it's very close within the top three. Remember, the regular season champion gets an extra 15 playoff points. So as of right now, that would go to Chase Elliott. That's going to put him in my championship four alone. I know he doesn't have a win yet this season. I'm sure it will come eventually, especially with runs like this last weekend at Martinsville. He ended up with a 10th place finish, maybe not deserving of where he was on speed. I think he definitely had a top five car even when he had fallen off in the second half of the race but uh five top fives on the year that also ties him for the most top uh sorry five top tens this year also ties him for the most only one top five on the season though that's the uh really the shining reason why he is not number one on this list is strictly for that he's obviously been the most consistent driver this year not by much over these other three but he has been the most consistent driver this year that's why he's leading the point standings and uh, look out for Chase Elliott as we get uh, kind of similar to Alex Bowman, get into the southern months, su summer months where he gets the tracks that he's ran well at. Dover, uh, that's another track I forgot to mention with Alex Bowman. But Dover, both of those two have won at before. You have Watkins Glen, of course. Uh, he hasn't won at Sonoma, but he's really good on the road courses. Uh, he won at Road America last year. So we'll, we'll get to see Chase Elliott perform really well here, I'm sure, shortly, and he can definitely get his first one of the season. Until then, I have him at number four on the list after this last weekend at Martinsville. Coming in at number three on the power rankings list this weekend is Ross Chastain. Dropped it back one spot from second to third. I didn't want to do that with the top five, but with William Byron getting a second win of the season, obviously I have to put Byron up there. He's won more races than anybody else this year. And when you win a race, you're going to move up in the power rankings list. I mean, let's be honest. So unfortunately, even though Ross Chastain got his fifth top five of the season, which is the most of any NASCAR driver so far this season, had to drop him back. Now, he didn't perform too well the week before that at Richmond, which is why he was second compared to Ryan Blaney. He hasn't led as many laps as Byron Elliott. Elliott or Blaney so of the championship four the reason why I have Chase Ross Chastain ahead of Chase Elliott is simply because Ross Chastain has a win Chase Elliott doesn't it's a for sure lock that Chastain's going to be in the playoffs I know Chase Elliott's a regular season points leader he's likely going to get a win but he's still not secured into that spot yet he is 42 points ahead of Ross Chastain but again that that win and having four more top five finishes than Chase Elliott is the overlying uh, reason why Ross Chastain is ahead of Elliott on the list. So uh, comment down below if you actually like Elliott over Chastain or Chastain over Elliott for P3. It was a really tough call for me this week, but I didn't want to drop back Chastain twice. Plus, when you go on a week-to-week -week basis, Chase Elliott finished 10th. And Ross Chastain finished fifth. Yes, Chase Elliott led the most. Uh, sorry, led the second most laps. He did win two stages. 
Uh, and Ross Chastain got a top five though, so it's like it, it's so it's so close. If Chase Elliott would have had a better finish, I think I probably if he would have had a better finish, he would be more points ahead of uh, second place in the regular season standings as well. Maybe he could have competed for his first win of the year, but he lost that track position and it was downhill from there really uh, for Chase Elliott. So maybe he could blame the pit crew for it, not Chase Elliott himself, but overall collectively the one team over the nine in the power rankings this week. Coming in at number two on the list this week is going to be my man, Ryan Blaney. Blaney was number one on our power rankings list last week, but due to William Byron getting the win, had to move Byron up to number one because I do think he's the best. More on him in a little bit. Ryan Blaney still, uh, I think, the, one of the more consistent drivers this season. The reason why he was number one going into last week at the time, he had the most laps led. Now, all of a sudden, he is second in laps led due to the guy that's number one. Outside of that, though, he has the second best average finish this season now. It was number Number one until uh, this last weekend, but now it is the second best average finish for himself this season. He's got three top fives on the year following this weekend at Martinsville, which I believe ties him for the second most, sorry, tied for the third most top fives. He's still tied for the most top tens, of course, with five only with Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch. And he's got three stage wins this year, which is also tied for the most. He's second in the regular season point standing, so that's why I have him ahead of Ross Chastain. I know he doesn't have a win yet. Chase Elliott doesn't have a win. And that's the reason why Chase Elliott is behind Chastain. The reason why Blaney is higher. Blaney's led more laps than Chase Elliott. He has one more stage win than Chase Elliott, so he's got another playoff point there. He's only three points behind Elliott in the regular season standings as well, so it is pretty tight between Blaney and Elliott there. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And the fact that Blaney had a top five finish this weekend also. It was a top five, much like Ross Chastain this week. Chase Elliott got a top ten, finished tenth. But compared to Chastain, compared to Blaney, that's why I have them ahead of Chase Elliott after this weekend. Number one, though, on the list is William Byron. Of course, uh, William Byron, again, got his second win of the season. He now has the most laps led this year, 482 laps led through eight races for Byron. He's led a couple hundred even before this last weekend when he led a couple hundred. And uh, he wasn't that far behind Blaney going into the week. Now he's quite a ways ahead of him. He has over 140 more laps led, 143 more laps led than Blaney, who was second most uh, after this weekend. He's got two stage wins this year as well, which is tied with Chase Elliott. And uh, Tyler Reddick for the second most or third most stage wins. And then Truex and Blaney are tied for the most stage wins this season. Byron has one less top 10 than both Elliott and Blaney, but he's got more top fives than both of them. He has four there, only behind Ross Chastain. Uh, so second most top fives, tied for the second most top tens, most laps led by far, most wins this season, and tied for the third most in stage points. He's third in the regular season standings as well, so even though he has two wins, he is very consistent. Of any driver with a win, he's highest on in the point standings so far this year. And uh, the next closest would be Ross Chastain, which, again, I'm mentioning a lot of these guys that are in my championship four right now because they are that good so far to open up the gate this year. So hopefully you like this video. Comment down below if you agree with the rankings. What are your top ten drivers in NASCAR as of right now post-Martinsville Saturday night? And we'll do another one next week.